Ecuador is at a political crossroads, and this election was tipped to be decisive. Lenin Moreno was poised to win the first round, promising to continue the so-called leftist revolution of outgoing leader Rafael Correa. Esta revolución no la para nada ni nadie. El mismo rumbo con un liderazgo diferente que yo creo que a la final es muy deseable para el país. Alguien. Former banker Guillermo Lazo is promising change. El pueblo ecuatoriano está hasta la coronilla de tanto impuesto, de tanto abuso y sobre todo del impuesto más maligno de todo, la corrupción correísta. The results are in, but there's no clear winner. With just over 39% of the vote, Lenin Moreno just fell short of the 40% threshold needed to win outright. A runoff vote will have to go ahead in April. The election is forcing many Ecuadorians to reflect on the country's journey. The last 10 years under President Correa saw poverty levels drop, infrastructure built, and the rights of the disabled strengthened. Ecuador was part of the so-called pink wave of socialist regimes that united Bolivia, Brazil, and Venezuela, among others, against America and capitalism. But one by one, these leftist leaders have fallen, and Ecuador could be next. Low oil prices and government overspending have hurt the economy, and Correa stands accused of attacking the media and the judiciary. Cualquiera de los sucesores, cualquiera sea de la tendencia ideológica que fuera, tiene que enfrentar el problema de la de, de la deuda, de las demandas de corrupción, eh, y tiene que enfrentar el problema de los de, de todos los uh, sectores. It's why some analysts predict that despite his lead, Moreno might still be defeated, but only if Lasso can rally the support of other opposition parties to end Correa's leftist legacy. Sandra Gatman, The Newsmakers. I'm joined now from Lexington, Kentucky by Carlos de la Torre. He's the author of The Ecuador Reader, History, Culture, Politics. He's also a sociology professor at the University of Kentucky with a speciality in Latin American democracy. Thanks so much for joining us, sir. When Rafael Correa came to power, most of the continent was Bolivarian left. Things are a little bit different now, aren't they? Tell me how different Ecuador is, particularly after this first round of elections. Well, thanks so much for the invitation. You are right, when, when Rafael Correa won the election, those were the biggest moments of the success of Chavez. Uh, he had all of the petrodollars to spare, and many people follow into his footsteps, into the script of regime change by convening a national assembly to change the constitution and change all the institutions of the country and to get rid of neoliberalism. And that's what Rafael Correa did. And Rafael Correa ran uh, the country for 10 years with very high prices of oil. When the prices of oil went down, he decided to step out. If, Momentarily, at least. Sure. If Lenin Moreno becomes the next leader, is it unfair to say that he will just be a continuation of the policies of Korea? Because this seems to be a fundamentally different man. He was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, he seems softer, less belligerent. Sure, he's a socialist, but are all socialists the same? Well, you know, he was the vice president of Correa when Correa was cracking down on the media, when Correa was criminalizing protests, when he was putting in jail, accusing of terrorism student activists and indigenous activists, and Moreno kept his mouth shut. So he pretends to have a nicer face, and certainly he's much more amenable, he doesn't insult all the time, but he, he will continue the policies of Correa. What he has to do, and that's why for the government it's so important that they win in the first round, is they have to cover up all of the allegations of corruption. If we go to a second round, so, so we have the third place candidate, Cynthia Viteri, saying she would support Mr. Lasso, center-right, so is that, is that it? Does that mean that the center-right will win? Not necessarily. Uh, first of all, um, 
Correa had a very strong political machine. He has continued to have high levels of popular support, and he has transferred somehow his charisma to Lenin Moreno. There, is, there are many people who are afraid of losing their jobs, especially in the state, and they are afraid that the right is going to privatize or, or, or reduce the size of the state. And for the right, it's very difficult also to have a unity because Cynthia Viteri attacked very, very violent last or throughout the campaign. So it's uncertain, but quite likely, if there is a runoff, the possibilities for the opposition to win are higher. And this is very good because it will mean that the country could start to look for a democratization path. It's not only Correa that is the problem, it's all of the laws that he created. He created a law that uh, to control NGOs. If NGOs deviate from what they were established, they can be closed. They already closed the Pachamama Alliance, a very well-known international environmental uh, NGO. They also created laws to control the content of, the pri of what the private media could publish. And they have used libel against journalists, and they, have, and they have really attacked the media. So if the opposition wins, they have to go with a plan of democratization, of bringing back democracy, of allowing civil society to participate again, and of uh, decriminalizing and getting rid of all of those laws against the media. OK, and I'm looking at some of the promises of Mr. Lasso, the center-right figure former banker who says uh, he'll create a million jobs. That's going to be interesting, an interesting test if he comes to power. Another interesting thing, he said he would, he would kick out Julian Assange from the Ecuadorian embassy in London. Firstly, tell me why you chuckled or, or giggled, giggled when I said a million jobs. And secondly, tell me what does kicking out Julian Assange and not giving him that protection tell us about his possible foreign policy if he becomes the leader? OK, uh, let's start with the... I mean, politicians offer all kinds of things, and Ecuador is going to go to a huge economic collapse. I mean, Ecuador is an oil-dependent nation. With the high prices of petroleum, Correa could do public investment, could do all of these social services. But now, with the collapse in the prices of oil, they are in deep trouble, and Correa indebted the country in order to have money to continue with his social spending. So the next president, regardless of who this person is, is going to have a really rough time uh, dealing with an economic crisis. So that's why I was giggling. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of Assange, it's very interesting that Correa used the Assange case at the moment in which he, he was cracking down on the private media in Ecuador. Correa was attacking journalists. He was asking to be paid all of these incredible suits, supposedly because his honor was damaged by reports of corruption by his brother, etc., etc. So, hey, comes Assange, the great opportunity for him to present leftist credentials, not only leftist credentials, that he's, that he's supporting freedom of expression worldwide. And then Assange is a real problem for the Ecuadorian embassy. I mean, the poor guy is living in a very tiny flat in London. Not only that, Assange has his own agenda. He's doing all of these things to interfere in the American elections, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, for Moreno and Correa and the governing party, it's very important to keep him, to show their leftist credentials. And what Lasso has said is, is is that it's costing the government too much money. So quite likely, they will ask him to leave. OK, Carlos de la Torre, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for joining us.